A little bit more. <laughs> Isn't that what we're doing the photo shoot? <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Gary Modicky, and I'm a board certified Beverly Hills plastic surgeon. And today we're gonna to be talking about Kristen Davis. Uh, she plays Charlotte on Sex in the City. She's now 56 years old. And in June of this year, there was some photos taken of her and there's been a lot of speculation since that photo and the reboot of Sex and the City that she might have had some plastic surgery done. So today we're going to go through some of her photos and see what we think about her face and if some things have changed um, or if it's just more natural changes with aging. So if you look at Kristen's face just in general, you know, she's a very attractive woman. She has very natural features. Well, probably one of the reasons why she's an actress, you know, she's very photogenic. She's well balanced natural features such as her nose, her chin, her cheeks nothing in it looks out of proportion so I don't suspect she had plastic surgery up to this point as well you know if we're taking a look at the reboot photos and what everybody's talking about is that her face got really poofy and and some changes like that can happen just in general like we've spoken before right so in, if we're looking at the face did something with the body change did she put on a lot of weight did she gain weight and I don't see that so I don't think that it's a weight gain thing and her face just got fuller and more poofy from that. You know, as we get a little older, there's some hormonal changes. There can be menopause, there can be other things going on. I um, mean, again, that, the change in the hormones can again change the body and the face. But again, it's not the exact right timing for everything. And I don't think we would have seen as dramatic a change with that. It's more of a gradual change. So we're gonna take a look at her face and say, well, why could it be poofy? And, and then take a look into what else people are talking about her face. One thing I do want to mention is that there was a previous interview with Kristen and in that interview she said that she was scared of plastic surgery, that she was scared of the risks involved, she was scared of it could change her face and she wouldn't be able to go back and fix it if she didn't like it. And I think in general that's one of patients' biggest fears, you know, particularly people like her, they're in the limelight, constantly being photographed, people were going to critique her. The interesting thing and one of the good things I think about plastic surgery, good plastic surgery, is that it should be undetectable. So in other words, it, it, it's one of the patient's biggest fears, but it really shouldn't be. Uh, as long as they go somewhere to get quality work, the results in the end should just be undetectable or they might look slightly better. But when things like, oh, they look really poofy or really pulled or something's going on, then that's giving the secret away. I just wanna let people know that even though that's one of her fears, it shouldn't really be as long as you go and get quality work. So two points I wanna make about Kristen and her face and in general, is that you know we all age <laughs> you know so one of the interesting things i find out and when looking at our photos is if we look at our photos from over the last 20 years there really isn't that much aging going on in other words by the age 56 patients are probably going to start showing signs of a sagging neck or different signs in the face that you know just natural signs of aging and we see people not aging then we're like, mm, you know, bells go off, maybe something's going on. Now it is possible. She's just kept herself really healthy, used great skin care, maybe little touch-ups with, you know, Botox fillers and, and some of the newer skin tightening devices. And there could be a lot of maintenance going into that that could really slow down those signs of aging. But again, slightly suspicious that if we look at her photos that there isn't a huge change in the neck. And then secondly, one thing, uh, you know, I always say about noses is that they don't shrink as we get older, they get smaller. Same with the face. It doesn't generally get poofier as we get older. It generally loses volume or loses fat in the face. So as people are aging, it'll be really rare for them to all of a sudden get a big fatter face unless, again, they put on a ton of weight or something changed. The natural aging process is to lose volume in the face and not add volume to the face. One other common thing we're seeing with patients is that they're doing their facelifts younger as well. It's definitely a trend. And I think it's a lot to do with patients wanting to look well, they want to look young, they want to be more attractive, they want to look rested in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. They don't want to wait till it gets really bad and then do something. I am seeing a lot more patients that are doing more of a proactive or, or preventative facelift when things haven't gotten really bad yet and still getting a facelift or a mini lift. And, and the thing about that is, again, the change is, the change is a little less noticeable as well. So, you know, people don't pick up on it as much. Now, I really want to get into her face though because I don't see those changes that you normally see with a facelift, but her face is definitely poofy. So what, what could possibly be going on? I don't think she's had a facelift. Again, I don't see those telltale signs of, of a facelift being done, but there's definitely some things going on with the poofiness in her face, the smaller eyes, the really full cheeks. So it's possible she did something like fat grafting or she also could have done fillers. 
Now, if the fat grafting was done recently or overdone, she's gonna have that poofy appearance. Now, one of the things with that is that we often see with actresses is that there's always a healing time. So if they go and have work done and they get on camera too fast, that camera will pick up on the swelling as well. So they'll look really poofy. Uh, and, and that will dissipate over time. So if it is overgrafted or she did a recent procedure, we should see that slowly coming down over time and rebalancing out. Uh, secondly, she could have done something as simple as facial fillers. She could have added a lot of volume to the cheeks and the mid face. And when she's smiling, you can see that there looks to be a lot of fullness in the upper face and in the cheeks. And that's a very common area to add volume of fillers. Similar to the fat grafting, if it was a lot of fillers, all she has to do is simply wait because slowly over time, those fillers will dissipate uh, in her face and go back to a little bit more normal, less poofy appearance. So I think in general, I'm more suspicious for that being done, volume added to the face rather than lifting or facelifts. And I guess the, the real answer to that question is time's gonna tell. We're gonna know over the next several months if she's being photographed, are things kind of balancing out and, and is, 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 was it swelling, was it fillers, was it fat grafting? All those things over the next couple of months would slowly dissipate. But again, I don't think there was a, a big surgical facelift or a major plastic surgery procedure done on Kristen's face. But they would only go back to <clears throat> normal if she didn't maintain, like for example, if they were dermal fillers, they would only go back to normal if she wasn't doing routine maintenance to those fillers, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in general, if you're <laughs> continuing to add, she's gonna continue to look poofy, right? Um, and then sometimes people will go a little overboard in their first time, right? They go in, they're all excited, and they get all these fillers in their face, and they're like, oh my God, I did too much. Now, she could also dissolve it if it was fillers, right? She, and if it was fat grafting as well, she could do radio frequency devices to help tighten the skin, melt it down, get the swelling out of there. So there's some things that can be done if it's not what she wanted. But yes, if you keep adding to it, it will continue to be swollen or poofy. When people generally overshoot things, they usually pull back and let things settle down a little bit. But yeah, time will tell if she adds more what happens. One other thing to point out when we're talking you know, about these topics is what else wasn't done, right? So we often are looking at what was done, but we can also look at what we think wasn't done. And in her face, we can see she's always had very heavy upper eyelids. The brow is heavy, and I don't see any changes in that. So you know, you're not looking at the brow, there's probably not been a brow lift or other mid-face lifts. And her neckline is, is still very defined and contoured. So like I said, she could be doing preventative things, but I don't see any signs there of lifting or pulling other things going on there. And then if we look at the skin and the fine lines and wrinkles, it doesn't appear that she's doing a ton of Botox, different things, because she is showing fine lines you know, in the forehead and brow and um, around the eyes. And that's normal, right? And it, it also gives the appearance of some a more natural aging. You don't want everything to look absolutely perfect because then people are like, it looks too perfect, right? So I think it's good when people leave a little bit of signs of aging. It's not too perfect because it's gonna give the secret away as well, or if things are out of balance. So if her face and cheeks look really full and not as many lines and wrinkles, but her brow has all these wrinkles and not too full, we start to pick up on something's not matching here, right? So I think we definitely see some of that in her and whether she went and just put fillers in the cheeks and didn't address the other things, it may be why you're picking up on the subtle cues that you're seeing other things in her face. She's 56 years old and what you kind of implied in this video is that she doesn't look like she's had surgery, but she does look fuller, right? Mm -hmm. So do you find that that's a common occurrence in patients around her age that they start with fillers and then eventually they move over to like a facelift or something a little bit more invasive and, and fully surgical? Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of patients use things like fillers and Botox kind of like a gateway into the world of plastic surgery because they're not permanent. They can play around with them. They can do a little bit, pull back, you know, they're dissolvable. So a lot of patients will start playing with them earlier, like 56 is, is actually in nowadays probably starting a little older, right? A lot of patients are playing with these fillers and Botox a, a lot younger in their 20s and 30s. I'm not saying if that's right or wrong. They start touching things up earlier on just to do some preventative things. And then I think there's also a lot of devices coming out that are preventative, such as the skin tightening devices, other things that patients are playing with before opting for the bigger surgeries. It's sort of a strange analogy, but it's similar to, to anything. In the world of plastic surgery, there's adding volume and lifting, right? So even in the world of breast surgery, if the breasts are, need a lift and you put implants in, the, you didn't take out the skin, it's not gonna look well. Same in the face, what happens if there's loose skin or it's starting to show signs of aging and they just try to fill it all up, 
it's gonna look weird and over poofed if they really needed some skin tightening. So that's when patients need some good advice. If, if you're just trying to overfill everything to take up some you know, lax skin or, and you really need a lift, it's gonna end up looking weird and poofy instead of young and rested. I know her mouth isn't wider or her smile isn't wider, but it kind of, to me, feels like an optical illusion because she's so cheeky now. Is that just because she may have fillers in her cheek or would that be from lip fillers or like <clears throat> do you notice that her smile seems I don't know it seems more prominent now you know a smile can light up the room right so some <laughs> I'm not saying that that's the case but a lot of, a lot of patients afterwards the, or or not afterwards you know do big smiles to hide things right so if if she's being a little self-conscious of things she may be just kind of subconsciously doing this big smile and trying to be more animated trying to almost like hide what's going on and i can't really? stop smiling oh, good. it's very exciting to i be think back. i think we're more so you it could be that and it does look like she could have put a little bit of lip filler in as well so you know if you're doing the cheeks and some other areas of the face you know most patients are going to say maybe i'll put a little dab in the the lips as well but i do notice that some patients afterwards will do those kind of a lot of animation or things or a lot of smiling because they're trying to hide, they're trying to mask what's going on so people don't pick up on the other stuff as much.